I am Antoinette Bryant, President Business Agent of ATU Local 1555. The reason we called together this press conference is to give you ATU's response to what happened yesterday. We are absolutely disappointed, disgusted, and put off by the board's actions. As you know, I spoke in front of the board along with other um, not a, a negotiating team members and members of the community asking the board to go ahead and ratify this contract. Given that there's one tentative agreement they're claiming was a glitch, they're claiming was a clerical error or a temp error, which is absolutely false. I want to reiterate, this was not a glitch. It is not a mistake. There is no temp involved. And for them to do that is totally, totally disgusting. We got this agreement in July. It was formatted by the district. We received it signed on August 9th. As you know, we did not settle the contract until October 21st. And even after that, we made packets. We put the packets together for our members. We gave that packet to the district before our members voted on it. They clearly saw what we were voting on as well. They gave us their packet. 4.8 is on both packets. It's in both packets. I can't say that enough. They knew they signed it. They knew they signed the entire agreement. For them to think that this is a mistake or to represent it that way is totally disingenuous. And it speaks again of the bad faith bargaining that they have been doing from the onset. They brought Tom Hawk out here, paid him $400,000 to not negotiate. The time at the table, as you guys already know, was spent saying, no, we got it, okay, in an attempt to bust our union. They were unsuccessful with that. We came from the get-go trying to bargain a good, fair, full contract for the members that stand behind me, for the members that are at work, the members that are off today, and for the writing public. We wanted to ensure that their safety was going to be maintained and, in fact, accelerated. For them to represent that this is a glitch is totally not what happened at the table. It's totally representative of them mischaracterizing, yet again, another piece of what happened at the negotiations table. What I have presented you today is our statement, as well as our chronological order of what happened. As you know, we had a 60-day cooling off period, and during that time, there was a seven-day board of inquiry. If you look at our transcripts, it clearly indicates that 4.8 is one of the agreements that were settled. The district did not refute that then. Why would they wait until five days after the contract's ratified to say, oops, this wasn't supposed to be in there? Of course it was. And as someone indicated, well, it's a blank signature page. The writing of the agreement is on one page, the signatures are on another. They're saying it's a misrepresentation, it came from another tentative agreement. I challenge anyone, and I will do it again, to match that signature page with any other signature page. You will find that it does not match, and in fact it belongs where it is, behind S4.8. We did not strong arm Tom Hawk, we did not strong arm Rudy Medina, we did not strong arm Paul Overseer into signing this agreement. They signed it. We signed it. Just like every other agreement that is in that packet, all three parties for the generals and the two parties for the supplementals signed these agreements in good faith. As you know, the, board, the general manager stood up and said, this is a fair contract and we expect it to be ratified. Now here you come two weeks later saying it's not. I, I am so disgusted with this. We spoke with the general manager on Friday. She indicated to us that we could sit down on Monday because they've misrepresented the actual language of the agreement and cost it out. But yet they turn around and say it could be $44 million. We are doing our own costing. It says it's about 1.2 each year for the four years. That is a far cry from $44 million. So we just want you to know that for the public, that is watching this or that will view this later, that we are absolutely horrified that the district, after everything that went on, a contentious bargaining situation, two strikes and two people killed, that they would take this action. It speaks to the mismanagement at the top. It speaks to them bringing in a person that had no regard for the Bay Area riding public, had no regard for BART, that just did what he did and he is nowhere to be found. To say, hey, I did sign this. And I signed it knowing it was an agreement. Paul Overseer knows that. Rudy Medina knows that. So that's what we're out here to say to let you know.
Given this, where do you go from here? And is there a possibility of a strike down the road from here? As you know, we have never spoken the word strike. It has always come from the district. Our members were pushed into a strike July 1st, and we were pushed into a strike October 18th. Are you being we have now? always no, because we expect to get a deal. We signed an agreement. We have an agreement, and that's what we expect to be honored. We came in good faith to do that. We showed them what we were voting. They showed us what they had. It is an exact replica. So for them to misrepresent it now, in the 22 years I've been at BART, in the seven years that I've been involved, or the seven contracts I've been involved in, this situation has never happened. If you sign an agreement, that's your word, that's your bond, that you have agreed to this. To turn that now is totally reprehensible. So where do you go from, where do you go from here? At this point, this section is a general section, which means that we are dealing with SEIU, we are talking with them. We're going to meet with early in the, um, the coming week to find out where we go. We're looking at all of our options. But we, I think that I can say on behalf of SEIU, they are equally as disgusted as we are, as members of the press are, and public, the writing public that I've spoken with. So if the BART board does not vote for this package, what happens to it? Uh, depending on what they do, we don't know what they're going to do. I am still encouraging the board to vote this contract. We have an agreement. We have an agreement signed by all three parties. So I'm I'm still pushing for the October or the November 21st vote. But if, they don't, if they don't vote for it, are you back Again, we're, we're looking at our options. We have a lot of variables that we can do. Uh, the representation that they have made to the press with regard to uh, 3,300 members that would be taking six weeks of family medical leave. This is for people that are bonding with a child, a foster child, a person with a seriously ill parent, spouse, or child. Everyone at BART does not have that scenario. We're talking about a very small number how many, of folks. How many folks do you think will be doing it? It's not 30. To guesstimate, as people get older, they're taking care of their parents, they're taking care of serious, and it's seriously ill. It's not somebody for a hangnail or a cough. This is a seriously the, ill situation. What about the dollar amount? What about the number of people? I don't know the number of people. There's no way for me to know how it will be impacted. But I know that 3,300 people are not going on maternity leave. They're not bonding with children. That you know, I know that we don't have. I've been here 22 years. I've never been on family medical leave. I dare say, you know, that the majority of our members are. They count family medical leave if you go out on a shoulder injury or something. Maybe you're out for a day. They're counting that. This is an extended serious illness provision. It is not your basic family law provision. Is it a deal breaker though? If it's, does it need to stay in the package? Or is there a way to negotiate? Our members have already voted on a complete package. That's what we took to the members. We don't go back and say, oh, you know what? We want that back now. A deal is a deal and we've done that. Is there any circumstances in which you re consider reopening the contract and going back in? At this point, based on this section, we would have to talk with SCIU on it, and that's what we're going to do, because this section we bargained together. As far as the final the final actual print of the contract goes, you looked at, you showed your members, you know, the management had, who actually printed it up? We print up our own. Okay? So we take, there, yes, we there. take all of our tentative agreements, we put them together and format them in a neater style than all the crossings out, we put a cover sheet on that package. They did the same. We exchanged those packages, and they're exactly the same. The only, the housekeeping glitch, if you will, in one of the sections, there was an error with the dates. I believe the dates reflected 2013 instead of 2017. So that's a mistake. That's a glitch. Not when you have high-priced, high-powered, highly paid negotiators that have signed off on a deal, and it's done. And how many people actually signed the contract? Uh, for the district, on that particular tentative agreement, they had Tom Hawk, their half a million dollar man, um, Paul Overseer, the assistant general manager for operations, and Rudy Medina, who is the labor relations manager. On my side, it is just me as the chief negotiator for ATU. For SEIU, I believe they had, I think they had four signatures. So we're talking about a lot of people that saw this. And we're talking about when the packages were brought to us, they were exchanged. They saw this before we voted it with our members. So they knew what we were voting. But even if they didn't, their package reflects the same thing. We've got the cover sheets to reflect it. We've got their complete package, which has that agreement in it. The management's been making this argument that it's going to cost tens of millions of dollars. You're, 
Break down the numbers if you will, monetarily. Again, the numbers that we're doing, preliminary costing, we will be doing official costing on Monday, where preliminarily we have come up with it of being about $1.2 a year, which is like lint out of, a, out of Bart's pocket. It's not anything really significant or major. And for them to blow up this contract, this deal, after everything that has transpired over the last seven months on something that insignificant is a slap in the face to the riding public. It's a slap in the face to everything that has happened. It's a slap in the face to those two men that were killed unnecessarily. What's the chances that the trains would stop running? I don't think there's a chance at all. And I say that because we have not looked at all of our options. At this point, we look, we have a deal. And so we're and we're going forward with the fact that we have a deal. So talk, any talk about strike or anything like that is not in ATU's vocabulary. Based on what you heard yesterday at the board, what is your sense as to what the board's going to do? I don't know what they're going to do. I am hopeful that they will receive such an outcry from the public once the real facts are out. They put out numbers that are totally mischaracterizing this language, and so we have now put our numbers out. And you can see the significant difference in the amount. And so I'm hoping that they will understand that what they're doing is very, very reckless. It's very irresponsible. You're managing the fifth largest transit district in the region, in the nation. And you would take this kind of action after everything that goes on? It's not very responsible. And it's totally indicative of people that don't care about the circumstances that have transpired so far. For the next three days, we are talking, we're looking at our options legally, we're looking at our options with SCIU, so we will be meeting to confer with our entire negotiator. And you're going to be sort of maybe forced to make some hardcore decisions once the board votes one way or the other? Well, at that point, yes. Once the decision is made, then we will take that step. But at this point, we have a deal, and, we, and they have a deal, whether they want to acknowledge it or not. We've got the signed documents. It was in Negotiations 101, you read everything before you sign it. And they signed it. Uh, you know, no, I don't think it was a mistake. And it's not a mistake. It's a mistake if you have a date wrong. It's not a mistake when you package it in your package and you have it on your cover sheet and you give it to the other party or the other two parties because they also gave it to SEIU. That's not a mistake. It's not a mistake when we listed, the unions listed as an issue that settled at the Board of Inquiry back in August before the cooling off period was granted and there was no response from the district saying, oh, that shouldn't be in there. there that, so that's not a mistake. Is They've there, had it for four months. Is there any room to negotiate on the issue if somebody said, how about four weeks? Can you, or is that something you really can't answer and you're still discussing? Uh, we really need to discuss all of our options. There are several that we have right now. And again, because this is not solely an ATU decision, we are going to be meeting with SEIU and we're going to be conferring and seeing what's the best step to take. When do you meet with SEIU? Uh, we hope to be Monday or Tuesday. We don't have a definitive date. But definitely we want to meet before Thursday. When's the board voting? Thursday. They're supposed to vote Thursday at 9 a.m. at the board meeting. Okay? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so, uh, so any decisions that you will make will come after the Thursday vote by the board? Well, we'll make some preliminary decisions with SEIU prior to that because we're going to talk about our options and lay out what steps we want to take given various options and scenarios. But um, Thursday uh, 21st will be the defining moment, if you will, because we're expecting the board to vote on this. Thank you. And obviously, if they approve it, then we can yep. We keep it moving, which is what we expect should happen anyway. Thank you, guys. Thank you.